Hi, I'm Keely, also known as Kelly. And I'm Feely, also known as Alex. Welcome to our corner of the Shire, where we will show you how to bring Middle Earth into your daily life to keep you a, a happy, happy hobbit. hobbit. Welcome to this episode of Happy Hobbit. Today, I, Feely, am going to teach you how to make a very special dessert. Or lunch, if you really want to eat it for lunch, or even dinner. Anytime Hobbit food. However, this dish, this dessert, isn't exactly Hobbit themed. Today, I'm going to teach you how to make Thorin's toffee bars. Now, it may not quite seem, you know, a big thing type of Thorin thing. However, if you really think about it, the toffee bars are going to have layers, just like Thorin. On top, they'll be a bit crunchy, a little bit dangerous looking. You want to stray away, unsure about this Thorin bar. However, then, as you keep eating, as you keep hanging out with Thorin, you start to realize it slowly gets softer and softer, and by the end, you're glad you did that glad that you spent some time with Thorin, or, I guess, ate him? Well, at least the Are you Smaug? I don't think so. Alright, just checking, because, you know, eating well, dwarf. I, it's a metaphor, Keely. So today, you're going to learn how to make these delicious Thorin toffee bars. I'm going to show you how. For Thorin's toffee bars, you will need one and a half cups of toffee bits, either homemade, which is super simple, or store-bought. These are homemade. Around two cups of milk chocolate chips, or semi-sweet, that's what we're using. Around a cup of butter, a little bit less. It's not melted. That is yet to be occurred, happened, whatever. One and a half cups of flour and three quarters cup of brown sugar, and last but not least, a cup of condensed milk. The first step in making your Thorin toffee bars is to beat the butter and sugar together until it's combined. And you can't really tell, but as per Happy Hobbit tradition, a bit melted, a little bit on the, you know, unmelted side though. You're gonna do this for about one to two minutes. After it is combined, you're going to add your flour. And this is making the shortbread portion? Yes. You see, and all these layers that make up Thorin and make up his dessert that represent him on the inside. On the bottom is a very delicious shortbread layer. And then- Because he's short. Yes, it, it is. And he does like bread. And, but that's the layer that, in real life, if you were talking to Thorin, it would take you a while to get down and see that. It's you know? sturdy and simple. Yes. But you would have to break through the hard shell on top. Fattening. So while we're at it, yes. Shortbread bottom, middle, kind of a brown, sugary, toffee-like center. Then you top it off with the toffee bits and chocolate and it's gonna look a little bit harsh on the outside, just like Thorin, but just wait until you give it a shot. So once you've made the shortbread, and it should look something like this, it might be a little bit drier though, because you might not melt your butter as much as Happy Hobbits love to do. So after you've got it all mixed together and made up, you're gonna press it into a nine by 12 or 13 pan, which is just a brownie pan. And um, before you put it in though, you're gonna wanna line it with foil, and spray a nice baking spray down so that it doesn't get too sticky. And then, I'm just gonna press this down, a nice thin layer across the whole pan. So this is gonna be your base. to we'll hold up the toffee and the chocolate. It's gonna be Thorin's shortbread bottom. Keely? You're really obsessed with Thorin's bottom today? That's kind of weirding me out. To be honest, it's weirding me out too. Really? Yeah. It makes me feel better. This is kind of harder than it looks. Because <laughs> you want it thin to work as your base, but you don't want it 
too thin so that it will burn because this bakes several times. So I might just screw it up and you'll be able to not screw it up by watching me screw it up. So Thorin will have an uneven bottom in other words. His bottom might get burned. His bottom? <laughs> He's got bottom. So what I'm doing is just gently pressing it to the edges. And then just to make sure that there's no gaping holes in Thorin's bottom. <laughs> Why do we do that thing so fast? How do you people stand us? <laughs> so once you've got this nice and even throughout the bottom of your pan, I've just done it with my hand and kind of rolled it along to make it as even as I can get. And it might work better to take the dough in smaller chunks and then pat it down throughout the pan. Or even make a little bit more of the shortbread um, just to make sure that it's evenly covered or if your pan's a little bit bigger. But this should be fine. So then you're going to bake it at 350 degrees for about 15 minutes or until it just starts to get golden. But so we always say with our oven and his attitude, so we're going to keep an eye on it. And so you might want to do that too, because Thor's bottom might just run off. You never know. So once your shortbread is about lightly golden um, or is baked about 15 minutes, you're going to take it out and let it cool slightly. Uh, it doesn't have to be completely cool for the next step in this delicious recipe. Um, but while it's cooling, you're going to want to make the next layer, which is the filling of this delicious dessert. So, come with me. Over here, we have some butter and condensed milk. And all you're going to do is just let it simmer and melt all together. And all it is is two tablespoons of butter and a cup of condensed milk. So you're just gonna let that all melt together. And then you're gonna- On low heat. Yes, low heat. Thank you. <laughs> so it should just take a couple minutes for this to get all smooth and let the butter melt into the condensed milk. It doesn't have to be super long, just until it's all combined. And then what you're gonna do is, come with me again. Come back over here to the shortbread crust and you're just gonna pour it across the entire thing. Then, you're going to bake it again. Just make sure it all gets in there. And spread it evenly over the crust. Now, I know this is a bunch of little steps, but they're all really easy steps. The recipe is very simple and doesn't require really that many ingredients, so highly recommend you try it. Haven't had it yet, but it sure seems like it's going to be delicious. So what this is going to do in the oven is it's going to kind of caramelize. It's that nice soft filling to Thorne's personality, you know. The side that says plant your trees, Master Burglar. Yes. The one that says sorry Bilbo for being Trying there. to murder you? <laughs> yeah. Being a you know what. So once you get it all even across the whole shortbread crust, you're gonna to wanna to cook it for about 12 to 15 minutes until it's a little bit bubbly and browned. Start to look a little bit caramelized. Just make sure that there's not a bunch of brown gaps within this filling so that you can't see the bottom too well anywhere. So here we have the nice little caramely layer here. Let me shut the oven. So you want it lightly golden browned, um, and then immediately you're going to take your chocolate and you're going to pour it on top, which is one of the toppings. Get it nice, fairly even. Then you're going to stick it back in the oven just for about two minutes. And this is just to let everything melt together. And you're going to want to have your toffee chips ready because they're going to go on very soon. So after you've let this melt in the oven for about two minutes, and you can just keep it at 350 because this can be really quick, you are going to spread the chocolate and using, if you have something on hand like a frosting knife like this, it'll work really nice, but anything will really do. 
It's gonna wanna get nice and even. So we are preparing to put on Thorin's, you know, the hard shell that he likes to- The crusty exterior. Yeah, the one that he likes to show to everyone and pretend that's, you know, that's just how he is. In other words, we're about to put on the best layer of, in my opinion, of this dessert, which is the toffee chunks. And a tip about spreading things like this or frosting is to try not to let the knife come up. Oops. <laughs> Sometimes I'll let the knife come up too much. Don't burn yourself. <laughs> what do you mean, let the knife come up too much? Well, like, just spread like that. So here comes the final step in preparing your delicious toffee topping or Thorin's hard shell exterior. So you're just gonna take all of your toffee chunks and then you're just gonna sprinkle I'm all evenly across the whole dessert. It's okay if there's some bigger chunks and smaller chunks. I'll just make them, try to make them fairly even in size. And this will be about a cup and a half of toffee chunks. But if you want to go crazy, you can always do more. I think the recipe I made only made about a cup and a quarter, so yours might look a little bit more covered in toffee than mine. Might, in other words, look better. But I have a feeling this is gonna be very sweet no matter what. So whatever you've got will be good. Oh my God. I want it all. And making toffee is very, very simple. The only thing you have to be careful about is just not letting it overcook. So that's where a candy thermometer comes in, or if you've made it a lot, you can just kind of eyeball it, which I did with this. It got a, a touch overcooked, I would say, but it still tastes amazing. Basically, the recipe I used was just um, regular sugar, granulated sugar, and butter, and I just cooked it in a pan and boiled it for, I don't know, like five or seven minutes or so. And um, waited till it started to get really brown and thick. And when it started to look like it was about to get burned, I got it off, poured it on a baking sheet, nice flat piece of toffee, and then um, just let it dry and then beat it up and got into some nice chunks. But I'll put the recipe that I used in the description. So, Get them nice and, you know, a little bit, maybe pat them in there. Get them nice and cozy in with the chocolate so that they don't um, fall off or something. Though I don't know why they would fall off. Well, when you cut it, maybe. Yeah. So how long do you have to wait before you can eat it? Well, it is best, or you should, let it cool completely before you eat it. Um, so that could take overnight, um, but I'm not that patient. And what you can do instead of waiting that long is just put it in the refrigerator for, I don't know, however long it takes, <laughs> hours, and then it should be good enough. I mean, it, I think it's really just about making sure everything sets together and um, making it so that you can cut it perfectly or to let it cool. But yeah, I would just say a few hours in the fridge and you're good to go. So after we've let these Thorin toffee bars sit for about, I mean, depends on what you're doing. You put them in the fridge, these were done in probably like four hours, they were nice and everything was set together and a bit chilled. Um, but on your own, if you're not putting them in the refrigerator, I would maybe even let them sit overnight, just to let everything sit up. Or just be impatient and just break them to them anyway and just start eating. But we refrigerated them, took them out in a couple hours and then just ate like a quarter of the pan because that's how good they are. Here is one of the little Thorin beauties. Nice shortbread crust on the bottom. The nice caramelized condensed milk layer in the middle, topped off with the chocolate and the toffee. Thorin's hard outer shell toffee. So let's see how, see how strong Thorin really is at keeping us away. Or just eat the toffee bar and not make an awkward 
metaphor about eating a dwarf. Mmm. These are exquisite, I will say. So every time you make these delicious Thorin toffee bars, you can think about what a great man Thorin was and all he did for Middle Earth. Wait, spoiler. What do you mean was? I, he is on, on a trip to Peru. Oh, okay. Yeah, you didn't know that? No. It's been all over his dwarf book. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. His statuses have been like, woo. So anyways, every time you eat these, you can think about Thorin, all he did for everyone, and all he did for you, and think about all the good that these beauties are gonna do for you, you know, everywhere. Do make your heart feel good, because they're that good. So, catch you next time. Happy health <laughs>